Howdy y'all. I'm standing in front of the old Gillum cabin, which is in uh, western Arkansas in the Washita mountain range. This is the cabin that I'm doing some restoration work on. And I've got part of the work done. Um, I got the, the girders on, and I'll show you some more of that. And the floor joists are on and, and bolted down, you know, ready to go to put the floor on when I get the, the oak floorings, which I'll be using. I'll, I'll show you around here what we've got going on. I set up a work area. I set this old carport tent up here so that I could work all these pieces out relatively in the shade. Place where I can put my tools and set of saw horses and I can cut all the pieces out and then roll them down and set them on the on the girders. This thing sure has been handy. I've got the porch which comes out eight feet from the building. I've got it all framed in. I used an eight by eight oak timber for the girder for the front girder and there you can see that I had to splice it together over that pier. I've got the floor framing, I guess you could call it, the round low oak uh, floor joists. They're flattened on top, just like I did on the cabin that I built there on our property where I used the round oak floor joists. These are cut flat on the top, but I didn't cut a tenon on these. They're just cut flat. You can see the string that was how I knew to cut out my the bottom portion that actually sits on top of the girder there. And the girder is an 8x8 eight eight post oak timber. It's been hewed on three sides, the front, the top, and the back side, because you can see the back of it, but not the bottom. I planed the bottom, and I had to splice it together there with a half lap, which would have been a traditional way to do it back in the day. And I'm trying to keep this, what I'm doing with the porch in the flavor of the cabin. These are oak logs, hand hewed. Some of them need a little bit of attention. There's some on this side right here that has had some damage that uh, will have to be probably some repair work done on these, which I've done. And it's a little bit of a challenge, but it, it can be done. These are the girders are sitting on stone piers, and I've left my batter boards and string up. And I'll move around here, and I'll show you how I got the ends of these all straight on the string. This girder is lined up with this string, and this string right here, all the joists are in line with this string right here. I did basically the same thing with these joists here that I did with the joist on the cabin, the, the first floor joist. I had the top flat and, and it was trued up. I could put my level here on both ends and then measure down to get this cut across here. And I just put my square on the top here and measured down and got a mark and then just connected that mark all the way out here where I had used a level to come down from the, the top of the joist. And I cut all those out with a chainsaw. I put uh, metal underneath the, the bottom side of the girder so it's not actually, the wood's not in contact with the stone here. I'm using some inch dowel rod. I countersunk an inch hole here down so that I can get a good bite on the lag bolt that goes through and into the, the girder. And I'm filling that hole with some inch dowel, cutting it off even with the, the top surface. It's kind of dark under here, but I put a girder down underneath the building here out towards the, the seal log. The old floor joists were notched up over the seal log there, and when they moved the cabin, they had slipped off that, and so they slid the seal log back to catch the ends of the joist but the sill log was back about three and a half inches on the other end down there and i had to pull it out but before i could i had to support these uh, joists so i put a girder down underneath there and i had to cut separate little four by four posts coming off the girder up to the joist to hold them up so that i could pull the sill log out where it needed to be these logs down at the bottom all the way up 
pretty good, nearly all the way up to the top of the doorway. They had spread really bad, and they were out about three or three and a half inches. And so I, I put these four befores on there and bolted through with some all thread to kind of hold that together. And it, it just goes up to the header log that goes over the doorway. I've got a tarp up there because I had to take the door out to, to be able to do this. But I was able to pull these back very, very gently. I'm going to step inside here. And I'll show you what I did. I'm not sure about the light in here. But I had uh, four by fours on the inside and the outside bolted together. And down here at the very bottom, I put an eye bolt in on both both of the, the posts at the bottom. And I put come-alongs on to the eye bolt. And I had to hook it to a chain. I did this on both sides. And we brought a tractor up here with a front end loader. And we parked right there. And I was able to crank on the come-alongs and pull this all back together as good as I'm going to be able to get it. I really enjoy looking at these old logs on the inside where they've been out of the weather. They look crisp, clean as when they were stacked up here. The axe marks are very crisp. You still see the marks from the broad axe where they scored it here to sever the fiber so that they could come along with the broad axe and take the wood off. It amazes me the men and the women that lived back in that era, how hardy they were. You can see how they notched the header log and the upper the upper and lower log over these joists. The joists weren't very big for the span that they had to carry, but I've seen this a lot on old cabins where the joists were notched through. It's amazing how tight the growth rings are on these logs. But you've got to remember when these pioneers came into this area, back in the early, mid-1800s. They had the choice of the timber that was old-growth virgin timber. Now, these logs are not very big as far as the diameter of the tree that they cut, but they've weathered the ages, even though there's some damage from maybe termites or some water damage. They're still standing, and they're still pretty strong. I was able to get the ends of the joist right on the string all the way down. So I had something nice and straight on the front side to work back towards the building. And I was able to get everything laid out square. Although I'm right on eight foot at this corner. At the other end down there, it's a little less than that because the building is no longer square. It's kind of shifted just a little bit over its lifetime. But what we build out here for the porch, the roof and the flooring and everything will be good and square. And I'll just work my way back towards the building and let any discrepancies be at the building. James Thomas Gillum fought in the Mexican War in 1846. He was discharged in April of 1847 and he later received a land grant in Arkansas where he moved and uh, he built this cabin or had it built somewhere between 1847 and 1850. Now the cabin has been moved from its original location actually a couple of times. The first time it was disassembled and moved down the hill to get out of the north wind. And then later, just recently, it was moved to its present location where we're working on it. If you think you would enjoy the series of the, on the Gillum family cabin, please let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, we ask you to do so. And be sure and tap the little bell so that you can be notified when we post a video. Thank you for watching. God bless you.